Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. What's an idiom? Well, that's kind of hard to explain, I feel. The Oxford English Dictionary defines an idiom as the specific character or individuality of a language, the manner of expression, considered natural, to or distinctive of a language. But in honesty, that doesn't really make things more clear. A clever explanation comes from Cambridge, who call it a group of words in a fixed order that have a particular meaning, and that's a far better explanation. We all use idioms in our everyday life, and they're phrases which have been established for a long time now to mean a specific thing. Take something like over the moon. If we say we're over the moon about something, it means we're really happy or excited about it. We aren't literally leaping over the moon. But as this idiom is so well known to us, when someone says it, we know they aren't actually about to take off. The word of idiom itself comes from interesting roots. It arrived from the Greek idioma, meaning peculiar phraseology, as idioms are rather peculiar phrases. And this comes from the Greek idiomai, meaning to appropriate to oneself. As these idioms, I guess, are created to fit in with our language and experiences relating to it. So that's why the first half of the word idiom comes from the Greek idios, meaning personal slash private. And that is why it sounds so much like another word we use often in English, idiot. As idiot has its roots in meaning a private, ordinary person, who lacks any skills, as opposed to someone who serves the public with a skill like a soldier or farmer. So that explains to us why idiom and idiot sound so similar. It's not entirely related to this video, but I always love finding out what connects similar sounding words. Anyway, back to idioms. Idioms are used all across the world and can contain a number of things, from animals like the idiom the cat's out the bag, to parts of the body like can you lend a hand. How the idioms we are looking at today feature names, as in given slash first names we use for actual people. Not only do I want to explain what exactly these idioms mean for those who may not have heard of them, but I want to figure out why these specific names are used in them. Why is it for Pete's sake? And why is Bob your uncle? Well today, let's find out. Also, I just need to mention that I'll be focusing on name-based idioms that are here in the English language, as they're the ones I know the best. But please let me know down in the comments what name-based idioms your language has. Let's kick things off by finding out why exactly Bob is your uncle. Bob's your uncle is an idiom we use when trying to explain that something should work out in the intended way. E.g. when cooking a pizza, you could say, put it in the oven 15 minutes and Bob's your uncle, it'll be perfect. It's actually a really strange term now that I think about it and try to explain it. But who was this Bob? Well, we don't seem to be too sure. Do we have a few ideas? One of those ideas relate to the 20th Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Robert Gascoigne Cecil. As his name was Robert, it could be shortened to just Bob. Following him as Prime Minister was a man named Arthur Balfour who happened to be Robert's nephew. At the time, people were shocked that Arthur was going to be Prime Minister, as he had minimal political experience beforehand, so many thought he only got the position because his uncle was Prime Minister before him. It's through this nepotism that it's thought we get the term Bob's your uncle, as the idiom means for something to go well, and for this person with an uncle named Bob, things did go rather well. Though I must stress that this is only one possibility as to where the phrase comes from. Another popular phrase is take the mickey slash taking the mick, and this means to teach slash make fun of something, e.g. if someone did an impression of you, you could be like, stop taking the mick out of me. However, it can also be used in shock of something. Say if a bill for a meal was way more than you expected it to be, you could be like, you're taking the mickey right to the waiter. In this instance, it works the same way as you're kidding me does. This phrase is thought to originate from another phrase, that phrase being to take the urine, I'll say to keep this family friendly. A fancy word for urine is micturate, so it's thought it might come from this word. How have there's little evidence for this? Another popular theory is that it originated from Cockney rhyming slang for the phrase taking the urine, initially being take the mickey bliss, as bliss and the word for urine rhyme. Though eventually this became just the taking the mick. The only issue of this however is we have no written evidence of this phrase taking the mickey bliss, so we ultimately aren't too sure. I guess I'm taking a bit of the mick with not giving you guys a clear answer here. Perhaps you could all do with a bit of cheering up after me taking the mick out of you all. And once you're really happy, I could say you are happy as Larry. And that is exactly what this idiom means, to be really happy. Though, who is this Larry and what made him so happy? The idiom is thought to be of Australian or New Zealand origins, with its earliest known use coming from some Kiwi writing in 1875, saying, we would be happy as Larry if it were not for the rats. The popular belief is that the Larry that they're talking about is Larry Foley, an Australian boxer from this time in history. He was incredibly successful in his career and was able to retire from the sport at just 32 years old with enough money to last the rest of his life. So with being that young, rich, retired and successful, it's thought that Larry would have been pretty darn happy indeed. And another theory is that it comes from the Cornish slash Aussie slash Kiwi phrase of Larrakin, a name used for a hooligan or miscreant, who I guess 
guess would have been pretty happy to just messing around. The next idiom actually contains not one, but three names, that being the phrase of Tom, Dick and Harry. This phrase has many names in it because the phrase relates to the idea of many random people appearing. The phrase is used to relate to just unknown random people, and it's usually used in reference to not wanting random people, e.g. I didn't invite any Tom, Dick or Harry to my birthday, or I need a plumber but I don't want any old Tom, Dick or Harry. It's rare you hear someone demanding Tom, Dick or Harry, sorry guys. But why these three names? Well it seems to be a phrase of old English origin, and in England's past, Tom, Richard aka Dick and Harry were three of the most popular names, so using these popular names implied that they weren't names targeting anyone in particular, but just generic unknown men. Another idiom that uses a generic popular name is jack of all trades, meaning you are fairly good at a lot of things, but not an expert in anything in particular, hence why this idiom is usually followed with master of none. This phrase doesn't point to any particular jack who was good at many things, jack was slash is just a popular generic name, so it was applied to this phrase. Not so much an idiom but an exclamation of frustration is for Pete's sake, which is said when angered or enraged about something. Like if your computer crashed or you dropped your coffee, you might shout, for Pete's sake. This phrase is thought to derive from the world of blasphemy. It's a phrase that some would say when they didn't want to blaspheme. Instead of saying for God's slash Christ slash for heaven's sake, they could substitute these holy words for the simple name of Pete instead. Who Pete is, however, we don't seem to be too sure. Some feel it relates to St. Peter, but that kind of goes against the whole it being used to stop blasphemy idea. The other idea is that the name is an adaptation slash corruption of the idiom for pity's sake, which makes sense as pity and Pete sound similar, and both these idioms are used somewhat in the same way. Let's carry on with name-based idioms we use in shock, with the term of Great Scott. We use this to express surprise and amazement, most popularly uttered by a certain time traveller. While once again we aren't sure who exactly the Scott in Great Scott is, the popular theory is that it relates to the American Army General Rinfield Scott. He was supposedly a huge man, being 6 foot 5 and weighing up to 300 pounds in his later life. As a general in the Mexican-American War in the 19th century, he became well known across the country, and it was around this time the phrase was coming into use. So the popular idea is that this great, in size, Scott led to the creation of the idiom Great Scott. And one final exclamation of shock and surprise featuring a name is Heavens to Betsy. This is once again an American created phrase, and we really don't know what Betsy this relates to exactly. The most popular idea is that this Betsy is Betsy Ross, the woman who made the first ever version of the flag of the United States of America. There's no evidence to back this up. She's just a prominent Betsy who was around when this term started to gain traction. The idiom of in like Flynn means to quickly and easily achieve something is usually thought to come from the actor Errol Flynn whose good looks and charm supposedly made it very easy for him to meet women. So, in like Flynn, it came to mean achieving something easily, as getting to know women was an easy achievement for Errol Flynn. This also explains why the idiom has quite the romantic connotation to it. Let's move away briefly from idioms with English language names in them, shall we? A popular one of these being the idiom of on the fritz, which uses the German first name of fritz. We use this idiom when something is broken, e.g. the television is on the fritz. The popular idea is that this comes from the nickname German soldiers of the First World War had, Fritz. As they were disliked at the time, this disliked event of something breaking had their nickname bestowed upon them. However, the issue with this is that the earliest recording of the phrase comes from 1902, and German soldiers didn't have this nickname until 1914. Other ideas for where this name comes from include it possibly derived from a comic strip which featured a character called Fritz who got to all sorts of mischief, and it's also thought that it may simply come from the fizzing electric sound that old tech made when it was broken or damaged. No Way Jose is another phrase featuring a name not of English origin. We say it to people when they ask if we want to do something, and we really don't want to do it. It's highly unlikely however that there's a real Jose in all of this. We often put words together that rhyme for no reason other than that they sound fun. Think of terms like silly billy, willy nilly, or handy dandy. No way Jose most likely came to be due to people's love of rhyming phrases, and Jose rhymes perfectly with the words of no way. Another rhyming based idiom we have is with even Steven. We say this when we are well even with someone. If someone owed you £5 and then gave it back to you, you can say to them, we are even Steven now. The term is thought to come from a letter written by Irish satirist and poet Jonathan Swift. In this letter to a friend named Stella, he wrote, now we are even, quoth Steven, when he gave his wife six blows for one. What the blows were in this case I'm not too sure, but here we have someone called Steven saying we are even, and as mentioned, people love when things rhyme. So the 
idea is that from here, Eve and Stephen became a popular phrase. We use the idiom of life of Riley to reflect a happy and joyous life, e.g. you would tell someone they are living the life of Riley if they were happy and doing things they enjoyed. Riley is a popular Irish name. The determinist thought to possibly derive not from Ireland itself, but Irish people now living a better life in the United States. As they were living better lives there than in Ireland, and so many of them would have had the name Riley, life of Riley came to mean a happy existence. It's also thought to come specifically from an Irishman called William Riley, who ran away with his sweetheart before being executed. Either way, the term was made way more popular by the 1883 song Is That Mr. Riley by Pat Rooney. And finally, let's look in something that's more a name we use for people rather than an idiom we use in the language. That being the term of Peeping Tom. This is a name we apply to people who ogle at others without their consent, shall we say. The term comes from the story of Lady Godiva, who rode a horse naked through the streets of Coventry to persuade her husband not to raise taxes on the poor of the town. Out of respect, the townsfolk agreed to not stare at her while she did this as a thank you for her help, and they did all look away. All except one. That one man who looked at Lady Godiva as she rode naked was of course called Tom. He was the original peeping Tom, who the idiom was named after. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain, and donating just two dollars a month allows you to enjoy ad-free videos and bonus patron-exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos, and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at NameExplainYT. On Instagram, I'm also NameExplainYT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.